Welcome to the weekend edition of the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Joy Taylor. On today's podcast, we feature all the best segments from this week's slate of Undisputed with in-depth interviews and discussions. We have a lot to talk about heading into Monday. Skip, Shannon, let's get to it. The Sixers were eliminated by the Celtics last night in Boston. Joel Embiid had a chance to tie the game in the closing seconds but missed the layup. Now the question becomes, what do the Sixers do this offseason and whether they can get LeBron to come to Philly? We're joined now by FS1 analyst Chris Broussard. Mm. Chris, Hello. after this series, could you see LeBron going to the Sixers? Uh-huh. I, I, I got to be honest. If he leaves Cleveland, he should go to Philadelphia. Now, I was skeptical about this, and I really didn't think he should up until about a week ago because I was like, he wants the ball in his hands. Obviously, Ben Simmons has the ball in his hands. I don't want him taking it away from Ben. Right. But I talked to somebody last week who would know, and they said LeBron wants to play off the ball. Mm -hmm. I said he's never played off the ball in his life, including St. V. Right. And they said that's because he's never had a teammate who was a playmaker for other guys. Like Wade and Kyrie were playmakers, but more so for, for themselves. themselves. Correct. And so they said if he has that type of teammate, he mm -hmm. wants to do that. Now, it might be challenging, but I said if he wants to play off the ball, it's a no-brainer. To me, it's a no-brainer. You stay in the East. Mm -hmm. You got a great point guard. You got a great big man. I think they, with LeBron, they would have the formula to compete with and beat a Golden State because you know yeah. with the Spurs, the teams that have beaten them or given them trouble mm -hmm. have had size they and have. played big. You got to punish them down on the block. Yep. Mm -hmm. They, they, they to. try to go to that Hampton Five with Embiid and the LeBron with his stature, his leadership, he could tell Embiid. There's nobody there right now that says, stop shooting threes. Get on the block. <laughs> I mean, it's nice he can hit them every once in a while, you know. But get on the block. Mm -hmm. And and here's the thing too. Now they would have to. Hopefully they could keep Redick. You need shooting. You, you know. I know he's <laughs> he's a free agent. Would he stay for less money to try to win a championship? Maybe. He might. Yeah. He might. And then you know you got Sarge who can shoot. Covington mm -hmm. can shoot. No, he can't. Well, he's not a shooter, he but, you shoot know. The regular season. He's okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. And then, may, you know, could you keep Ilyasova and Bellinelli? Maybe. If not, you might be able to get some guys right. like that. So, mm -hmm. and here's the final straw. They need him. Like, if they had gotten to the conference finals, God forbid if they had beaten Cleveland I, in the I conference. I agree with that. Now, he could, I don't think he could have done it. No. It would have been the Durant move. Yeah, yeah Durant did it with Durant no problem. Durant did it, but mm -hmm. now he could he, he, yeah. I, I'm not saying he couldn't have done it because you're right. Durant did it, and now Durant gets props. But uh, Durant's not in the goat conversation. Yeah, yeah. It's a little different. It's a little more, you goat. know, higher standard for he, LeBron. He might be in the best player on the planet. <laughs> no, he didn't he, he, he that conversation. I don't think that's a conversation. Real, but you know, they player. need LeBron. They yeah. need a closer. Yeah. There was, I think, there was some He'll sentiment. Closer? LeBron's a closer. Oh, he, he's a yeah. closer now. He's a closer. And what? he can teach those young boys. So yeah. I, I think it's a it's a perfect fit if he wants to play off the ball. You want to go? No, you can go. I, I, you, you sure? Pile on. No, I can pile on. I can see I can see it happening because he's about winning championships. And if he feels the Sixers give him a better opportunity than say the Cavaliers, because I always and I've always felt his first option is to remain Same. in Cleveland. But can he attract another big name? Because he knows. In order to take down Golden State, you need at least three guys. And next year, you got Boston coming. Right. Hey, yeah. yeah. coming back. LeBron sees himself in a Ben Simmons. But here's the thing that's working against LeBron and the Sixers. Le let's just say LeBron has another two years, maybe three, at playing at this level. Can Ben Simmons develop a jump shot by then? Because the one thing that he loves more than, any, than, than a playmaker is guys that can knock down shots. Because... That's why he surrounded himself with shooters. They have a specific job. Kyle Korver has one job. JR has one job. Okay. Guys that, that play with him normally, they're specialists. Ray Allen did one thing. Mike Miller did one thing. Well, this would be different. Yeah. Like, it would be a different, yes. differently built team. Because yes. LeBron wouldn't be handling the ball as much. Right. As much. But he still, but when he drives to the basket, hey, see, Skip, when he drives to the basket, it's like a moth to the flame. The most, he, you think he wants to go to that flame? He knows how it's going to end. So when LeBron drives to the basket, he knows they're coming. So I kick it to Ben Simmons. What he going to do with it? 
I look, Ben showed now obviously he can't shoot a lick. <laughs> exactly. But he did show he can actually play off the ball yeah. with TJ McConnell yeah, was I it. Agree you with you that. know, he can't. He so did. occasionally when LeBron does handle it, Ben will be okay. You know, he, he posts sometimes and stuff like that. So I agree with one of Chris's points and disagree with your conclusion. <laughs> but I do think that last night. As the clock hit zeros, the door swung wide open for LeBron to go to Philadelphia because you are correct. If Philly had done what I thought they would do to the Celtics, and then if they had somehow done to LeBron what I thought they had a real shot at doing because they are a tougher matchup yep. than Boston will be for LeBron and company, then you, you can't do – I mean, there's no law against it because, <laughs> as you said, Kevin did it. He got away with it, and everybody forgot – Oh, yeah, you left Westbrook for that, but he got his ring. You left a team that was up 3-1 on the team that you joined but that was up 3-1 and lost. But it's the classic, if you can't beat him, join him. Yeah. So yeah. Kevin Durant got away with doing that. I don't think LeBron could get away with that. It would just be such a horrible end-of-career look. But now that they melted down, yeah. not once or twice, but really three times yes. in this series. Two, three, and five. It yep. is a situation, silver platter screaming for you need LeBron James. But where I disagree with you, I don't think you need him off the ball. I think this team needs him on the ball because Ben did play off with TJ. TJ settled them down and got them organized yeah. much better than Ben. I'm not sure he's a point guard. I don't see that. They degenerated. They, they collapsed. They shot selfs in foot because when he was, when, when he was yeah. trying to, to get something set up because – if you have a 22-point lead in game two at Boston, your point guard has to get you home in that game. If you're that guy and you're like seven feet tall, you, you get them organized. You get shot after decent shot after decent shot. You're going to make enough. You're going to hold on to 22. Yes. When you're up five, five with a minute four left in overtime of game three at home, your point guard or whoever your guy is, who's that guy, the it factor guy, has to say, slow, me, slow, I got slow, this. Hey. We, we got down. this. Yeah, let's get a good shot. I'm, I'm going to get Joel a perfect shot, or I'm going to create a shot in the lane that I can make. And both of them last night, starting at the eight-minute mark, there was this stretch where they're up two. And I thought they were starting to gain control of the game. And Embiid takes three straight, the wildest shots you could ever imagine. <laughs> and I'm saying, because I'm rooting for the Sixers, what are you doing? And then Ben caps it off. He comes down and tries some dipsy doodle underhand shot that doesn't even hit the rim. It hits the backboard. And I'm like, what are you doing? Because you can't play that way against a well-coached, disciplined, smart team, high IQ team, and win the game. And they didn't win the game. I believe LeBron could take the makings of a juggernaut and take it up a level at, at his age, 34 and 35 seasons, I think you'd have a real shot at winning the East, and I do think you would have a real shot of challenging Golden State. Yeah, I, I'm talking some of – I mean, you're right about Simmons. In fact, yesterday when they made the run and took out, the lead, he was, he was on the bench. Yeah. It was McConnell. Um, but I, I chalk a lot of that up to youth. It, I guess it does maybe remain to be seen. Is he a true point guard or can he be a true point guard? First year ever playing point guard in the NBA, and he did a good job. Yeah. But you're right. In the playoffs this series, he looked bad. But here's the thing. I think LeBron, if he goes to Philly, let's, I think he can – let's say he leads them to a championship yeah. while he's still the best player right. in the world or top five, whatever. And then as he gets older and they mature – they could win another one or two. They could. Maybe then. And, and I, I'm going to say this, Skip, and you know I think Jordan's a GOAT. I do believe if LeBron wins another ring or two, it's, it, it's, if he somehow won this year, I mean, it might happen sooner. But if he wins another ring or two, in 10, 15 years, he's going to be known as the GOAT, just like Jordan today. Because – some people the, the, think he already is. I, I know. The millennials. A lot, well, it, like okay. the mill, millennials. <laughs> right. The millennial, right? The 50-year-old millennial. But, but, right? but here's the truth. Like, because, you know, most older people, Oscar Robertson, I had Clyde Drexler on my podcast. He, They don't think Jordan's the GOAT. Now, they don't disrespect him. They know he was phenomenal. Phenomenal, he was. But they're not saying, they, they're not putting him necessarily ahead of Kareem yep. or Oscar. You know, some of the guys of their generation. It's kind of this generation that's saying, oh, he's the GOAT. Right. Undisputed. There's right. no discussion. 
These millennials, a lot of whom already think LeBron, if they look back in 10 years and, you know, the details get foggy, mm -hmm. they'll say – they're not going to say he went to Miami and he joined Wade and, and brought Bosh. They're going to say he's got five rings. Three different he's, locations. He, three locations. He's been to the finals twice as much as Michael Jordan, even though he lost. He's been there twice as much. He's got virtually all of the individual regular season, postseason records. Yeah. They're going to think, why what is this even I, They're going to be thinking what I already know. Mm. <laughs> so do you believe that report that came out after All-Star break that some representative of LeBron's was in the Philly neighborhood or area scoping out school systems? I'm going to tell you, yeah, because initially people weren't people saying, the initial report was that it was LeBron. Yeah, and then, then it got I amended. was told yeah. it was, and this was not from his yeah. partners or anything, but I was told from somebody in Philly that it was some reps for him went to visit mm. high schools. Okay. So I think it's got real potential. It, it, to me, it may – like, look, the Lakers would be very – they'd be great with him and Paul George, but they still in the I West. I know, I know. Here, yeah. why, why – The, the only thing that would turn this upside down is if they did go and beat Golden State this year, then he would stay. You I think, think he would stay? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it would no be hard to leave it. It would be – I think he'd have – he'd have carte blanche to do whatever he wants. If he, if he led them to this title over Golden State, I'm not saying he wouldn't stay. If he stay, led them to a title over Houston. Yeah, yeah. If, if he went leads them to a he title. He can do whatever he wants at, this, you, at that point. Are you saying Houston's going to be Golden State? No. I don't know what you're saying. I just, I wondered, was that a bet that you were throwing out? or I don't no, know. No, I'm not betting you anymore. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah, right. Oh, it's over. We'll yeah. see about that. <laughs> there, Chris, thanks for joining us. No mercy. Let's add a new wrinkle to the LeBron-Jordan debate. Last night, the Cavs beat the Raptors, and LeBron is now headed to his eighth straight Eastern Conference Finals. LeBron got plenty of help from his teammates, including 23 points from fellow All-Star Kevin Love. So, Shannon, mm -hmm. who had more help during their career, LeBron or Jordan? Hmm. Interesting question, Joy. No, the answer is We already know the answer. Oh, Michael yeah? Jordan, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Michael Jordan had the better players. And what... Also, what goes into this, Skip, is that anytime LeBron has had really great teammates, players, he's only there for a short period of time. So mm. he played with D-Wade, but he only played four years. He played three four, years. Four years is a long time, but go ahead. Is it is it longer than the ten years that Scottie Pippen played with Michael Jordan? Hmm. Oh, okay. I just, 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 just check it, Joe. Yeah, I'm just checking. Because I ain't Joe, remember, I told you yesterday, ain't good with numbers. Hmm. What about the six years he played with uh, Ho Grant? Horace Grant. He played six years. So LeBron James has never had an all -star, had an all star teammate that he played with longer than four years. Hmm. Michael Jordan had ten years with Scottie Pippen. Scottie Pippen's in the Hall of Fame, top fifty player, hmm. seven time All Star, seven time All NBA, ten time All def uh, Defensive. Skip, you, did you know that Scottie Pippen was an eight time First Team All Defensive player? Hmm. Ho Grant, All Defensive. Dennis Rodman, two time Defensive Player of the Year, hmm. All Star. Tony Kukoc won Sixth Man of the Year. Charles Oakley was a two-time all-defensive uh, uh, all NBA player, mm -hmm. all-star. Skip, we can go on and on. And the thing is simple. And these guys had a specific job. But here's a very interesting stat, Joy. I don't know if you know this, Joy, because this was, you know, you were young. You were a little thing running around there getting on Jason Nerds. I'm sure of that. Mm. <laughs> all those championships, those six championship seasons, guess who led them in assists? One, Scotty Pippen. Mm. LeBron James have yet to play on a team in which he has not led the team in scoring and assists. Assist. That's 15 up, 15 down. So the numbers are going to be look a little skewed because now it's an offensive game now and guys have uh, gaudy stats. But there's no question in my mind that Michael Jordan hmm. had a better supporting cast really? than what LeBron James has. Hmm. Interesting. So, Joy, I happen to start looking at all-star teams and – through the years, and I start adding up the numbers, MJ versus LeBron. And the first thing I find is that in nine out of Michael Jordan's 15 NBA seasons, he was the solo all-star on his team. Mm -hmm. Only five times in LeBron's 15 seasons was he the solo all-star on his team. So it's nine solos for Michael, only five for LeBron. Mm -hmm. Now that also includes one of the nine solos was 1998, that was Michael's last championship run in Chicago. 
Nobody else on that team made the All-Star team. Can you believe that? Scottie Pippen, that guy you were raving about, yeah. he didn't even make the All-Star team as Michael's teammate that year, 1998, in which they went all the way to Utah game six. And you know what happened? Michael stole the ball from Carl Malone, dribbled up the court. He didn't try some funky, crazy horse shot off one foot falling out of bounds. He just went straight up on Push Byron... Up. Russell right there at what the free the last, throw line, the held the pose, just held what the pose. What were the last two-minute reports say? What were the last two-minute reports So, say? back to this. That's that's kind of hard for you to argue. Nine solo All-Star okay. years to five for LeBron. Okay. So, only six times, that's the other six years of Michael's career, did he have one All-Star. He just had Scotty for six years made the All-Star team. So, that's six out of 15, and the others... Nine. So well, he so never do had a multiple well, 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 all-star skip, skip, team. Skip, don't do that. Don't do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because Michael Jordan got to the league in 1984. So Scottie Pippen wasn't in the league. Michael Jordan also went two years to Washington. Mm-hmm. So don't do that. So so 10 of those years in which he played with Scottie Pippen, Scottie Pippen was a seven-time all-star. Mm-hmm. But that's none of my business. I know, but I Mike, you Michael back. wasn't there. Michael wasn't there. He had the two years off. So mm-hmm. only six times was he able to play with one other all-star, Scottie yeah. Pippen. Had only one. Yeah. Hold on, I'm talking, wait, wait a no, second. No, no, hold on, hold on. No, skip for, for context here now. Michael yeah. Jordan got to the league in 84. Yeah. Scottie Pippen didn't come into the league until what? 87, 88. Okay, so So that's what? three years. So what's So how point? can Scottie Pippen go to the All-Star game with him if he's not in the NBA? Well, I'm just saying, this is all he had. So those years, he didn't have any All-Stars. I, okay. Do you remember Big O, Orlando Woolridge? Yeah. Michael Jordan's rookie year, he averaged 23 points a game. Okay, he didn't he, go to the All-Star. I'm he, just, I'm doing he, All-Stars. That's all I'm doing. Okay, well, how and, and I'm looking at at LeBron James, and you realize once in Cleveland and four times in Miami, he had multiple All-Stars with him because last year in Cleveland, obviously, he had both Kevin Love and Kyrie, and four straight years in Miami, he had both Dwayne and Bosh. So that's multiple All-Stars. So if I add up all the All-Star appearances that you've been able to play with, Mm -hmm. that's 14 for LeBron and only six for Michael. Well, that would mean, I think, 14 is much more than six. So I think that means that LeBron's had way more all-star help than Michael ever thought about so, having. So let, me get, right? so, so let me get this right. Scottie Pippen finished third in the MVP voting the year Michael Jordan left. He's an all-star game MVP. He led the league in, in steals. Mm-hmm. He's an eight-time first team all-defensive player. So which one of those guys, which one of those guys, okay, of all the guys that LeBron played with, tell me the guy that's better at playing defense than Scottie mm-hmm. Pippen, Dennis Rodman, Horace Grant. Okay, help me out with this. What happened to that uh, that top 50 player, Scottie Pippen, after he left Michael Jordan? What happened? He took him to the uh, uh, semifinals. Yeah. They won 55 games the year Michael left. Did he ever make an all-star team? Yeah, hold on. Did he make an all-star team? This is your, You're raving about all this stuff. Did he make an all-star hold team on. without Michael Jordan? I, hold on. Uh, hold on. Help me out now. LeBron leaves Cleveland. They're in the lottery. They get the number one overall pick three times. Michael Jordan leaves the Bulls, and they win 55 games without him. Mm. Okay. They go to the Miami Heat. They go to four straight finals. Mm-hmm. He leaves. They're in the lottery. Mm. I'm missing something here. Well, uh, you're missing. With those two you're, all-stars. You're missing that Scotty went to Houston, then he went to Portland, and he never made another all-star well, team. Th- this is a top 50 player. I've been consistent with this. I wrote it in the Chicago Tribune. You can look it up. Michael Jordan made Scottie Pippen. He certainly made him a top 50 player. And Scottie knows I feel that way, and he does not like it. He's had big issues with me before, and I'm going to say it again. Michael made Scottie. What's Skip? Skip. You know Scotty didn't have a good time in Houston because you know who was there. He never liked him. He doesn't like him. But all that being being said, Skip, tell the people at home how many times Michael got out of the first round before Scottie Pippen joined his team since he made it. Okay, if you'll tell the people that it took LeBron nine years to break through and win his first championship. If you'll do that, I'm good. It took LeBron nine years. Nine years? Yeah. Boy, that's a long time. But hold on. And what did he say? It's about damn time? Le- but but if, if, if Michael's going to make the playoffs at 30 and 52, Joy, at 44 and 38, mm. I mean at 38 and 44, I mean, really? Is that what we're talking about? What happened? 30 when- and 50. Hold on. How you go to the playoffs at 30 so, and 52? Well, wait a second. If LeBron took his talents to South Beach yeah. to join forces with the great Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh, who was an all-star before he got to Miami yes. and Toronto. Yes. And then what happened in 2011, that first go-around? I, 
I don't know. Boy, it looked like the chosen one became the frozen but one every, in the but, finals. But let's use right? con let's use context. Huh? This same Mavericks team that beat the Miami Heat 4-2 in the NBA Finals mm -hmm. swept mm. the two-time defending champs, mm. Lakers. They wow. also blew the doors off Kevin Durant, James Harden, Russell Westbrook mm. in five games. But see, we got to give it some context now. Mm. So are you telling me Andrew Bynum, Paul Gasol, Kobe Bryant, how could Kobe Bryant get swept? Who was favored going into that series? That's the only Miami, that, Dallas. That's the Miami only, was favored. That's the, yeah, yeah. That's the only series that LeBron that's has correct. ever been favored in. Yeah, but he was favored, and boy, he shrank. But, I don't know. Hold on. He sh let me, so so they sweep the two-time defending champ with Kobe Bryant. So Kobe Bryant shrank. Kobe Bryant shrank. Mm, I guess so. But this ah. is about Michael versus LeBron. So let me, okay. And LeBron's played with 14 total All Stars to only six for Michael. But, but okay. Well, that's I but, I think. Does that Which, mean that okay. LeBron has more help? So you, so you believe, you believe D Wade is a better player than Scottie Pippen? I don't know. Yeah, I, I would trust him more in the clutch for sure. He makes more big shots. Yeah, I would. Okay, Dennis Rodman. Who does LeBron play with? Dennis Rodman made two All Star teams. He was two, two. time. He was two time Defensive Player of the Year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Led the league in rebound. Two All-Star teams, two. And, and guess what? Dennis never made one with Michael. Hold on. Interesting. But, 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 here's, Interesting. The, here's the thing now. You know why? Because he joined him. He was 33 we, years old, that, 34. Okay, okay, here's the thing, though, Skip. Mm. Let's be fair. Now, we know the All-Star, the All-Star, be it Pro Bowl, mm. All-Star game in baseball or basketball, yep. is a popularity contest. We've seen Magic Johnson not play in the NBA and be voted to the All-Star game mm. in 92 when it played in Orlando. Mm. I know. I so, you're saying oh, Scotty whoa, wasn't popular whoa, in 1998? Whoa, skip, skip. He didn't make the All-Star team. Can you let me let me talk. I just want to get, let me get a. Woo. Now, on these all NBA teams, the fan doesn't vote for that. Who votes mm. for all NBA, Skip? The writers. Guys like Skip Bayless and mm. these guys, and, and, and your former partner, Stephen A., that yep. follow these games. Yep. So they voted Dennis Rodman all defensive eight times. Mm. They voted Scottie Pippen ten times. Mm. That's what he. Horace Grant, all defensive team. Charles Oakley, all defensive. But Skip, I mean, come on now. How about Michael Jordan? How many times was he all defensive? Uh, I think 10. 10, yeah. So yeah. maybe he's sort of LeBron is everybody like, around him. What about LeBron? Mm -hmm. You make it seem like LeBron has never made first team all defensive team. Oh. He used to be good. He yeah. didn't play defense anymore. All I know is mm -hmm. the team, I, all I know is in this past series, when they tried to shot against LeBron James, they were shooting worse than they shot against any other Cleveland Cavalier defender. Mm. That's now you love stats. Mm -hmm. I just gave you one right there. Eat yep. it up. I love stats. Yeah. I love the fact that four players LeBron has played with made all-star teams without LeBron, either before or after LeBron. Nobody Michael ever played <coughs> with made the all-star team before or after him. Nobody. So, so if you make all he made all Scottie Pippen. So no, that's his only. No, that. That's his that. lone. It's like Tonto to the Lone Ranger. You, that's what. what it was. But see, here's the thing. What also made this team so successful is that you could say, you know what, Ho Grant, go lock somebody down. Dennis Rodman, lock somebody down. Pip, lock somebody down. I didn't even mention Ron Harper. He now he really never made an all defense. defensive team, but Skip, mm. you know he could play. Mm. And before he blew that, blew his knee out, he could really, really play. Who set the tone for that front line, or actually the back line, as it was? You couldn't even get the ball across half court against him because Michael was in the middle. All of them. All of right them. The Skip. Mm. Scotty, you saw what he mm. did in, in the 91 finals. Mm. Can you tell the people at home what Magic Johnson did to Michael Jordan in the game one finals? Mm. What did he post on him, Skip? Yeah, well, you tell him. I don't know. I, I wasn't there. You were covering the game. <laughs> yeah, I was there in 98. I covered the team when Michael, dub. Michael Jordan was the lone all-star on Triple NBA dub. champ. Can you believe that? Has that ever happened? He played. Wow. I'm, I'm trying to say, when is, when is LeBron going to play with a two-time defensive player of the year? Mm. Two-time defensive player of the year. Mm. Rebounding champ. Steals leader. I'm waiting on LeBron to play with one of them. Mm. Play with Oak. When is LeBron going to have him an enforcer like Oak? Yeah. Well, last, is, year, oh. last year, LeBron got to play with two all-stars, multiple all-stars, and it was Golden State in five. I don't know. Interesting. Can you tell the people? He's the that, best player on the planet. If you don't mind me asking, those former All Stars that he played with mm -hmm. when they were with the other teams. Can you tell the people where they were drafting at? Where they were drafting every year? Where who was drafting? The teams that these All Stars, the Kyrie's and Kevin Love, before they joined up with LeBron. Can you tell them where their teams were drafting? <clears throat> where their teams were drafting, mm -hmm. you're losing me. You mean where the Cavs were drafting without LeBron? Yes. Obviously. With, 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 with Kyrie, the all-star. Yeah. What would he draft? Okay, Kevin Love in Minnesota, that all-star. Yeah, I never liked Kevin Love in Minnesota. But you hyping him up. Yeah. You just he hyped made, him up. He made all-stars. He, he's made five all-star teams. Uh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I think he's playing. A, I, I tweeted late last night, 
He's playing the best basketball of his life, and you know it, and I know it. He's played very good the last three ball yep. games. Yep. I will give him credit. But mm. you also saw those seven games in Indy hmm. with Indy. <clears throat> yeah, so did you. That's why you got nervous about uh, no. picking the Raptors. But, uh, mm. So we come to the conclusion, you and I both agree, Michael Jordan have more help. Go ahead until you read, Joy. Yeah. I don't think that was I, the conclusion. I think the conclusion was LeBron's played with 14 All-Stars to only six for Michael. No, that, that, was, that wasn't the question. Huh. Who's had more help was the well, question. I think Not that, how many All-Stars. That just closes the case. No, Scott, boom. This man got, he got two top 50 players, uh, Dennis Robin and Scotty Pippen. No mercy. Kyle Kuzma will be with us in a minute. Skip, what are you looking forward to talking about with Kyle? So, like Laker fans, Kyle is fashionably late today, right? Mm -hmm. No, that's not true. We're just a little early, actually, for him. But I want to talk to him about what my partner just threw out as we are going to break, as what he I often does because he knows I don't have time to respond because he throws out that he was the best rookie yeah, on the was. Lakers. I ain't lying. Hmm. There is that guy. What's that ball kid's name? Uh, Lonzo? You, you like Donovan Mitchell? Uh -huh. He finished second in scoring to Donovan Mitchell. Hmm. Wow, interesting. Oh, but yeah, yeah, very interesting. So very. I want to talk about Lonzo Ball going 10, 7, and 7 as a rookie, which is, those are pretty extraordinary numbers. You have to go a long ways to find better numbers. But so was Kyle Kuzma, Being the 27th overall pick. That That's pretty, I, I'd say the Lakers had the steal of the draft, yeah, right in the in the big picture. Yeah, with well, Kuzma, yeah, 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 he's special. Yeah. I mean, I, I think they snatched him up with the 27th pick that's in the draft. Said, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. he's definitely still in the draft. I think he's the best rookie on the Lakers. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's going to be on the all-rookie team. So you think long-term he'll be better than the number two overall pick in the I know draft? he's going to be first-team all-rookie. Hmm. I know that for certain. But we, do you want to go out on your limb again? Ben Simmons. It's going to break? Yeah, I got oh. Ben. Yeah, see. You got the, Kyle Kuzma long Joy, what they say? Even a, even a Sequoia or a giant redwood will break. Mm. But look at the willow mm. and the bamboo. Really? <laughs> Oh, this interesting. Is, yeah. Hmm. Uh, so long who you term, like? I, I like both of them a lot, but I'm going to take that number two overall pick. Mm -mm, but um, I do wish I could take Kyle Kuzma and pour about, like, five ounces of Kyle Kuzma into Lonzo Ball, and then you'd really have something. Kuzma you'd have a gets terror. Buckets. Right? Gets buckets. No in. moment is too big for him. He's not afraid of anything. He is not afraid they of anything. They gave him the moments. ball. Go get us a bucket, Kuz. Yeah. Wah up. You go get buckets. Well, that's what I like. To get us a bucket, I believe, because I like he's it. about to walk. <laughs> All out right, let's set. bring out Kyle Kuzma. Mm -hmm. There he is. Welcome to the studio. What's up, bro? How, how you doing? doing? Good. 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 Yeah. yeah. How you doing? Welcome. Hey. Uh, yep. Welcome. Skip. How are yeah, you? that's how you how dress. You? Good. That's Good. how you dress when you're hey. the best rookie on the yeah. Lakers. That's how you dress, Skip. I got to one up you. I know you dress sharp. Yeah, yeah, you know I'm doing a little something. Thanks for coming on with us, bro. Yeah, for sure. No problem. So. You were the 27th overall pick in the draft. And a lot of people, I, I wasn't even sure you were going to go in the second round. I don't know what you thought going into yeah. the draft. And so in the big picture, as you look back and the smoke clears on your rookie season, how would you evaluate what you did? Well, I think I did a pretty good job of just really, um, you know, exceeding expectations of people. I would say. You know, for sure. Yep. Coming out, nobody really knew who I was. Nope. You know, I felt like... On draft night, I was excited. Everybody was excited, but for the most part, if you watch the you know recap, it was like, who is this guy? That is and, true. You know, for me to come out, mm. do what I did uh, on a consistent basis, and you know, really overachieve was you know pretty special to me. Or did you just achieve? Maybe you didn't overachieve. Maybe you were just what you were. Well, in my eyes, definitely. Yeah. You know, I'm a very confident person, and you know, right from the jump, right. you know, I knew what I was capable of. So right. the most amazing thing about this young man that you just alluded to was. Right away, you were not afraid. Mm -hmm. You were not afraid to shoot it from anywhere at any moment, which is it's hard for a kid, especially on the Lakers stage, mm -hmm. to do that. What, what do you have inside you that sets you apart from other rookies that way? Um, you know, I think I just have like an alpha mentality. Mm -hmm. you know, I think that's what it is. You know, um, you know, I'm not afraid of the moment. You know, I'll come out. I'm always prepared because, you know, my work ethic and, you know, that confidence really is half the battle. You know, if you're confident, then, you know, everybody where around you is going to be there. Did you get it in Flint, Michigan growing up, or where did it come from? Uh, I think I think so. You know, I think, you know, growing up there, you know, there's a lot of adversity, and, and a know, lot of adversity. I faced a lot of it. And I feel like, you know, make it out of there, you can do it any, anywhere. That is true. You play a position, and when I watch you play, the moment is never too big, as Skip said. But you're going against Kevin Durant. You're going against LeBron. You're going at. You play the position that the best players in the NBA play. Giannis, mm -hmm. um, 
Mm. What's your mentality? What's your mindset when you're going into a game and you have to face those guys? You have, might have to guard them, yeah. but then again, they're going to have to guard you also. Like you just said, <laughs> they have to guard me too. You know, that's what I come out. You know, at the end of the day, I'm in the NBA too. So right. why not, you know, push to a level and, you know, really compete with those guys? You know, for me, you know, I want to be, you know, on that level one day. So, um, you know, it's a great testing point, especially as a rookie, to go against those guys every night. So I want to talk about another rookie I was a big fan of as he came out in the draft, the number two overall pick. Buddy of yours named Lonzo Ball. Hello, Lonzo. But you are the flip side of Lonzo Ball. And my biggest disappointment that I expressed sitting in this seat morning after morning after your Laker games was I couldn't figure out why Lonzo seemed a little disconnected to me, a little disengaged, Mm -hmm. not as committed to playing. Like in the summer league, you were committed because in the the finals, the, the final the championship game, you were the MVP of the championship game, but he won the MVP of the summer league, right. which is pretty good. Right. It's not the highest level of competition, but it shows you what could happen. Right. But in too many of your games, especially your home games, I just couldn't find Lonzo. I couldn't see him, but I can see Kyle. Because when Kyle walk, you know, when you set foot on the floor, things are going to start to happen. Mm-hmm. What was missing this year in Lonzo? You know him. What, what, there was some, again, he, he went 10, 7, and 7, which is pretty good. But what was missing psychologically, intangibly in him that he needs to reach down and find? You know, I don't, I don't think it's something that was missing because at some points this season you saw it. You know, the second game of the season, I think that was he spectacular. Had 29 that, Phoenix, that game. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. You know, triple double games. Mm-hmm. You, know, um, you know, it was always there. It's just, you know, you know um, to consistently really just have it. And, you know, for him, it's all about, you know, trying to be more aggressive, you know, especially for us, you know, 10-7-7 was great. Um, But, you know, he's a throwback player. People aren't used to it. In today's, you know, day and age, it's all about point guards that are scorers, flashy. Yep. And for him, he's throwback. You know, he's a, you know, get up ahead, uh, find the open guy, make the easiest play. And for a lot of people, it's different. And, you know, he is who he is, and you know, for us, we need him to improve to you know take to another level. When you when you guys were like going to dinner some night on the road, did you ever say, "Zo, you got to reach down, man. You you got to bring it a little harder than you bring it." Did you guys ever talk about that? Most definitely, most definitely. Mm-hmm. And I think you know there was a point in time in the season where he was really catching his stride. You know, there's a point, maybe a month or two span where he shot you know 40 percent from he three. He shot it well. Something like that. Yeah. And. Um, you know, it's all about that, just having that mindset. And I think, you know, him being around me, you know, I'm a gunslinger. Not so, exactly. you know, hopefully, you know, yeah. you rub off on him. <laughs> how much of the, how much pressure was added on Lonzo because of his father talking before his son even set foot in the NBA? Well, I mean, if we're being honest, I think a lot for sure. You know, <laughs> he, he, he's talking, you know, your guys just show every day, yeah. you know, first take every day. Um, you know, he's all yeah. over the internet. Yeah. So that hype is, you know, it, it will forever be here for the rest of his career if you think about it. But, you know, for him, you know, he does a great job of really masking it. And, you know, you never really see it on his face. You know, and that's the you know, great quality that he has. Mm-hmm. Do you like LeVar? Do you, do, you, do you get along with him? Do you, do you? When I see him, you know, I haven't, you know, he, he's not as around, around as much as you guys really think. You know, you may see him a lot of games, of course, but, um, you know, I've only had like two or three interactions with him. So, Mm. um, you know, he stays in the background, but, you know, um, he's in the media for sure. I mean, you could be in the back of the room, but if you're yelling out answers, I mean, people hear you. (laughs) You you keep talking, he stays in the background, but we hear everything you say. Right. (laughs) So did you ever resent, because you do like Lonzo, how Mm. much pressure his father continued to exert? He went so far as to say the team has quit on the coach, on Luke Walton. Did, Did you guys, how did you feel about that? I think it was all white noise mm-hmm. at the point in time in the season. You know, um, of course, he is going to say whatever he wants to say. You know, he has his freedom of speech. But, you know, for us, it's all about who's in the locker room, who's in the organization, and that's what really matters. So for us, during that time, we're on a losing streak. You know, we really just rallied behind one another and, you know, really got over it. So That's, that's a good thing to say if Skip and I are saying that. Yeah. But this is somebody... In that locker room that you say in that locker room, that's somebody's dad saying that. That's a whole different ball game, Kyle. No, I mean it is, but at the end of the day, you know, it's about who we are and the organization. Those are the only two voices that really matter with the Lakers. Mm-hmm. And for us to, you know, improve and get to where we want to be, that's that's the way it has to be. 
Well, do you think that, okay, he's saying the team has quit on Coach Walton. Mm -hmm. Did it ever cross your mind, or do you think it crossed some of your teammates' mind that he might be getting this from somebody that's coming <laughs> out of this locker room? Not at all. Not at all. I think during that time, we are in a losing streak. It wasn't so much we are quitting. It's just we didn't know how to win. Mm -hmm. You know, all of us are young. We right. have four people that were drafted this year that, you know, played, well, really three that really played a lot. Right. B.I. Ingram, you know, he was a second-year player. Right. And, you know, Julius is, you know, still on a rookie contract. Right. So the main people in our core didn't know how to necessarily win. Right. So that was the biggest mm -hmm. reason. So I often during the year wanted to ask you about this, and now I get the chance. But you and the youngest ball, LaMelo, would go back and forth on social media, and yeah. it would get – Kind of ugly sometimes, sometimes, like low blows. Oh, you know, yeah. like like <laughs> like I, it would make Sorry. me me wince and cringe. <laughs> like, what what are you guys doing? Yeah, was it? Did it ever get real? Like too never. real? Oh, nope. never, never, nope. never, never. Even with me and Lonzo, you know. Okay. I think that's the thing that really kind of builds chemistry. You know, to know that, you know, you can joke with somebody. Right. That means you can, you know, be serious with them as right. well. So I think that was a great thing for our chemistry. And you know, you kind of saw it after the All Star break when we started winning, winning more games. You so. did. But it got, it got pretty harsh, man. Wouldn't you? I don't think so. No? No, not at all. All right. Not so that all. was just fun. Oh, yeah, um, for sure. Don't let me catch you on Fortnite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't let me catch you on that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you play, right? A little bit. Okay. I can beat you then. You only play a little bit. Oh, you probably can. You can't I'm, do I'm, not play Fortnite. I'm bad. Well, I can beat him because he only has to play a little bit. Mm -hmm. I play less than that, but I think I can beat him. <laughs> <laughs> just being competitive for no reason. Yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> So tell us what you see in this team, because you got a lot of young talent. Mm -hmm. I love this team going in. Remember, you did have Jordan Clarkson and Larry Nance Jr. And mm -hmm. uh, it, I, I thought this team was loaded. And then you added Isaiah, obviously, at the end. Do, w what do you see next year? Could you be a playoff team next year? Do you? Without a doubt. I mean, is, is that like a, a legit goal? Yeah, for sure, legit. Um, I, honestly, I think we could have made the playoffs this year. So do I. We had a lot of games. For instance, we won 35 games. We had a lot of games at the beginning of the year, like I said, that we didn't know how to win, that were right here, and we just didn't grab. So for us, you know, I don't, I don't see why we can't, took, even if we add nobody or not. Yeah. You took Golden State to overtime twice? Twice. Early. Yeah. Yep. You played big in both those games. Lonzo played pretty well in both But here's the games. thing, Skip. Now, you, you, you've gotten close to a lot of your teammates. Now, you know if LeBron and Paul George come there, they're going to break this up. You do know that, right? You know that. We'll see. You know if they bring LeBron James and Paul George to the Lakers, Skip, some of that young talent is going to have to go. Nature of the beast. Not, not his decision. Control what you control, right? You comfortable with that? I mean, you, you allow sure. me. I mean, I know you want to be the big fish now. I mean, I'll... I'll <laughs> They, they about to bring, if they bring Moby Dick up in there, <laughs> that, be, that big old white, that big old guy from uh, Akron, Skip. He's getting hey. old, though. He's, he'd be on his Kyle. retirement stint, right? Oh, well, ask Kyle. Yeah. Durant or, or Braun? Durant or Braun? Yeah. Right. Oh, Braun. Easy. <laughs> hmm. oh you all right? You disagree? No, no, he, no, 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 him. He said Kevin Durant way better than LeBron. I did not say way. Better. Way, way. Who way was better. the Finals MVP last year? Kyle, talk to him. I'm gonna let you talk. To him. I'm, gonna sit on, I'm gonna sit on this old. Come here. My no. question is, you know, was what you just, what he's saying mm -hmm. is, you know, if you put, if you switch teams, mm -hmm. are the Cavs better or worse with KD? KD is a monster. He, when he decides, no when he gets to his spots, as Iguodala was saying the other day, against listen, they just toyed with a pretty good New Orleans team. For sure. And the, the, the crucial game was that game four back at New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And Kevin Durant, j j remember Draymond texted him in the middle of the night, you, right. know, you need to bring it tomorrow, you need to be more aggressive like you and Lonzo to talk. Mm -hmm. And he just took the game over. And when he is making those jump shots, nobody can. LeBron can't shoot that way. He, he doesn't have that mid-range game like that. Yeah, Toronto that. You know, that he does, yeah, when he's 30 points ahead and he's shooting clowny fadeaways. That, have that you works. seen what he's been doing this playoffs, though? Who? <laughs> LeBron, I haven't watched. What happened? Unbelievable. Well, he, no. I'm just, well, let, let him sip so his, sip are, his are uh, you, coffee. Are you campaigning? For, would you like to play with him? You know, I'm not saying that. Mm. You know, I'm just saying from mm. the situation that we came from yeah. that he's a better player. 
mm. right now at least. You know, I don't want to get no tampering fines or anything. Okay. You know, we go through that a lot in LA. So. Who plays who plays <laughs> yeah. the better defense between Kevin Durant and LeBron James <laughs> right now? I just I'm wondering. I'm just asking. Oh, okay. KD's a good defender. He's, he's a he's, good he's defender. He's improved a lot over the past mm. two years. Boy, he rim say. protects. But, they don't, but you know they don't ask KD to do what they ask LeBron to do. What, the, so LeBron but, plays, but the thing wait is, a second. You have to what do. are they asking? To, he plays one man zone. He goes and stands but under have, the but basket. But you have to realize what he does on the offensive that, end. Okay. KD does a lot on the offensive yeah. end as well. But, but for LeBron, he's playing mm -hmm. 40 minutes a night. He's carrying a lot of people mm -hmm. that have never really played in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And you got to look at the flip side. KD, mm -hmm. you know, he has Steph. He has Draymond. Clay. He has Clay. Mm -hmm. You know, he has a lot of players that he can play in space, doesn't have to worry about double teams, mm -hmm. and doesn't have to worry about the same things that LeBron has. Don't have to worry about to rebounding. Win. What did you tell me Draymond did? He w walked out in the parking lot after they lost to LeBron, and he did what? He <clears> called KD. KD. Yeah, Why would he call KD? Steph, Steph Curry saved KD legacy. Because mm -hmm. if he just said, no, I don't want him here, he wouldn't have been able to come there. Mm. Who was the better player in the finals <sighs> last year? Stop it. Kid. Stop KD. it. KD huh? definitely was. Oh, there we go. So, so, so I'm does, starting it. The man yeah. averaged a triple-double. Huh. He's, done, he's done two things in the finals. He Nobody's over in hold five. On, hold on. He's done two things in the finals. No man can ever say. Mm. He averaged a triple-double, and he once led in a seven-game series in the finals mm. every statistical category. Mm. Points, rebound, blocks, assists. Do you remember Steve. game what four? What did he do that series that he averaged, averaged a triple-double? Huh? What did he go home with? He took the L. Yeah. He took the call. <laughs> but he took it in five but he, games. It wasn't but, even close. But, you, you, right, but Joy, you remember 2012? What yes, he, I do. It was a wonderful year. What, what did he hang on? What did he hang on? Mm. He did that to Harden, KD, mm. And old Russ. When, when they're all like 18 and 19. Whoa, don't do that. I, don't know. Mm. I mean, you, we yeah, have all the players come out here, the coaches come out here, they tell you, Ron, mm -hmm. but you still want to argue. Stop I, arguing I just, with the no, guests. No, I, I know what happened last year. He was the finals MVP. Shot the shot of the finals right in LeBron's how, face. How many of those trophies Bron got? Huh. Mm. No mercy. The Rockets and the Warriors are headed to the Western Conference Finals. Houston won last night, led by Chris Paul's 41 points, and the Warriors eliminated the Pelicans to advance to the Conference Finals for the fourth straight year. Game one is Monday in Houston. Kyle Kuzma is still with us. How how do you see this series playing out? It's going to be a fun one. Um, you know, I think this is a different Houston team than you know we've seen before. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a lot of junkyard dogs now. You know, they have PJ Tucker, they have Ariza, um, Bamute, Clint Capella is way improved. Um, James Harden's on a d different level, you know, usually in the playoffs. Yep. You've seen a couple past years that, you know, around this time he gets a little iffy, but, um, you know, I, I think he's done a great job all season and uh, especially this playoff, so. So which way does it go? Go and say still. Go and yep. say, yeah. It's going to be tough. You know, they got Curry back. He's looking fresh. That's he, the biggest he thing. Did. He's fresh. Looks fresh. You know, he hasn't played. How many games he's played this year? You know, he missed, he missed, he missed, he missed the last month of the season. Last month of the season, that's that's a lot of rest. Yeah. You know, you you've even seen it with Tristan Thompson. Mm -hmm. You know, late in that series, but um, you know, KD's on another level. Clay, you know, it's just it's going to be tough to get to get them out. So, what would you guess? Six games. Six, six, six. yeah. All right. I think six. Well, what you and I said, we got yeah. you and I got five. You had two uh, had two games against Golden State, 27-25. Your, your career high is thirty eight against the um, the Rockets. Uh, what challenges do the Rockets present for the Warriors? They're pretty much identical in a sense, and I think that's a, a challenge for the Warriors. You know, a lot of times the Warriors, they beat people by going to their death lineup, mm -hmm. um, being small, being agile. But, you know, Houston has the same thing. They put Bamute out there, leave Clint out there if they use, you know, David West or JaVale, mm -hmm. or they can just go completely small, put P.J. Tucker out there at the five. Mm -hmm. So... Um, you know, that's the biggest challenge that presents. You know, they're, they're pretty much identical in a, in a sense. So what happened in what I thought might have been your best overall game as a team at Houston? Do you remember yeah. that game? Mm -hmm. That was impressive. Oh, yeah. Because it looked like, because didn't James go for 51. 51 in that game? Yeah, 14-game winning streak, too. Yeah, 14-game mm -hmm. winning streak. Yep. Okay, what did you do to win that game? What was the secret to that? Well, the biggest thing with Houston is, you know, of course they're going to shoot a lot of threes, but, you know, you need to contain James. And, you know, he had 50 that game. But, you know, we, we made it hard down the stretch, and we made second-half adjustments by, you know, really just, you know, clogging up the paint and making him see bodies. Mm. A lot of time he isos from the top because that's the easiest place to iso on the court because there's no help. Mm. So, you know, with us, 
know, we try to just pack the paint in, mm -hmm. make them see wide bodies, arms, and, you know, get out to those shooters. And Chris Paul did not hurt you in that game because he scored eight, as opposed right. to last night when he had 20 in the fourth Sheesh. quarter. That was killer. Incredible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, the problem I have with Houston is they play the flip side of basketball from Golden State. Golden State is a basketball team. This is – an isolation show over right. here with these guys because mm -hmm. they go solo. It's your turn. It's my turn. Maybe it's his turn. Right. And if you look at the stats, in passes per game, Golden State's third in the league and Houston's 30th in the league in just how many times you pass the ball. Right. Well, that's – that's one's a good basketball team. The other one, they, they better – somebody better be going solo where you can't stop that one guy on that night. Right. right? No, for sure. And that's the, that's the thing that kills you with Golden State is that if they wanted to, they could ISO, but they play great team basketball. Mm -hmm. And especially in the playoffs, the game slows down. It's more a half-court game. And, you know, it's hard defensively to guard them because they're mm -hmm. great cutters. They're great, you know, at sitting screens away, you know, hitting that flare mm -hmm. guy. Um, of course, they knock down timely shots. So, you know, it's going to be tough. Yep. So the Rockets are first in isolations in, in the whole NBA. Yep. And Golden State's all the way down at 20th. The Warriors are first in off-ball screens, number one in the league. Mm -hmm. The Rockets are 30th. So you can just see they're the flip side of each other, That's even right. though they both score at record levels. Mm -hmm. It's the best offensive matchup we've ever seen, mm -hmm. except they do it completely different. upside down different ways. Yeah. And I'll take the basketball way. I'll take the team way. Right. No, right? definitely. I would take that too. But – as you see, you know, in the regular season and playoffs, you know, Houston has they have done a great job of capitalizing from their isolation basketball. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be really interesting to see, you know, how that really turns out. So what did you guys do the two times you took Golden State to overtime? What was the secret to that? What worked? Um, for us, I think we were one – we had the best matchup with Golden State, you know, simply because we could match them, you know, with length the same size, playing small ball, doing a great job of, you know, coming together on their switches and really just trying to guard those guys straight up because, you know, it's tough once they get screening and slipping and stuff. But that's the problem that they present because you can never fall asleep. Yeah. Because they got four guys on the court, I mean, well, three guys on the court, that's probably three of the top ten shooters of all time. Right. So you're watching the ball, and then here comes somebody to pick you, and they throw the ball over your head, and the guy, Steph Curry, is flashing for 28. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Clay is flashing for 27. KD. So they have limitless range. Right. And you have to work. So it's hard to – and because one guy's not ball dominant, the ball is constantly moving. How do you like, okay, I got to make sure KD don't come down the lane, but I still got to worry about Clay and Steph. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's tough, man. You know, they have three all-stars, you know, high-level elite players. Four with Draymond. Four, yeah. Four. That utility knife, because he does it all. No, definitely. But as a, a scoring threat, yeah. Yeah. to have those three guys in your team, it's just it's almost impossible. So who you did know? you mostly guard on the Warriors when you were on the floor? Uh, Draymond and KD. KD? Yeah. You mm -hmm. shut down KD, right? I don't know about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to hold you, on. Hey, you tried to – hey, he got he to gotta guard you too. Right. If you're going to get 27 KD, I'm going to get me 27 mm. too. Hey, that's how it works. KD is long, man. He's Super really long. long. You see it from his block numbers, though. Yep. You know, improving. So, mm -hmm. but LeBron got that fadeaway. And LeBron, you saw yeah. LeBron in game two with that mm. fadeaway. Yeah, like ten. Baby, ooh, that thing was mm. stank, that thing was stank and cut. Really? <laughs> Are we talking about the same LeBron who's shooting twenty nine percent from the three point line in the playoffs? He's shooting twenty nine percent from three, but he's shooting oh. seventy percent from the floor. Oh. So that average is fifty five percent. Oh, really? But oh. that ain't none of that ain't none of our business, Kyle. Oh. Really. How about Ooh. those free throws? You 72%. Like those? 72. That's not very good. See, he like to nitpick. Huh. Cause I ain't gonna say <laughs> wait, wait, you know, KD. Got a sweep, man. Wait, it KD's is what 92%. It is. Oh, wait, they did what? Got a sweep. They swept the number one seed? Mm -hmm. It is what it is. Uh -huh. A 59 win team. I know LeBron. It, Didn't Le you pick them in six? LeBron swept them. Yeah. You know, he swept Atlanta too, a 60 uh -huh. win team. Boy, you had, you had no faith in your man. You gave that sorry Toronto team two games? Seriously? Did you, know, did you know LeBron and them be the 73 and 9 team one time? Uh, definitely. Uh, it's going to be an interesting finals. Uh, definitely. Uh, <laughs> I, I feel for LeBron. Don't, don't, don't do that. Well, don't don't do that. you feel sorry for him? No, don't feel sorry. Don't, don't feel sorry for that man that great. Huh? Well, he's looking at three and six. He's looking right down the looking barrel. Looking right down at four and five. Uh, four and five? Is that your prediction? The 405. Huh? <laughs> the 405? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Four and five. Is that your prediction? I'm going to hold you to whoa, it. Whoa, whoa, skip, huh? skip. 
we got Golden State at Houston, yeah. and, and and the Cavaliers are sitting back. You know, LeBron said he needs a couple of days off. Yeah. JR's going to hit on the golf course right now. So we're chilling. We'll wait. <laughs> the winner of the Celtics and the Sixers. That's what we're waiting for right now. I don't want to project. I don't, I don't like doing that. JR's on the golf course? Yeah, right now. It's not a good sign. Yes, it's a great sign. Really? Got to fight. Gotta get some R&R. &R, yeah, right? gotta get some, yeah, Skip. Really? R &R. You just see what he did at DeRozan? Yeah, I did. Locked him up. I, I don't want him still shooting shots in the gym, getting some shots No, 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 up no, no, today, no, 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 no. What JR got, he don't got to get no shots up. Really? Yeah, he a bad yeah. shot. I, I, I thought you were going to be a, a prisoner of the moment with JR. Mm -mm. Yeah. Kev. But he played good D, though. You're the guy. Even the night, even the night he had zero points, he played great D on, on the road. Joy, watch. He'll be the guy who'll come in here next Wednesday just ripping and slashing on JR. Get him out of my sight. Put him at the end of the bench. I never want to see him again. No, I'm going to come in here Monday. I told you I'm coming in yeah. here Monday. Yeah. I'm coming with that land jersey on. Really? Three. Okay. Yep. Make sure I watch this. Yeah, you should watch yeah. No mercy. The Cowboys will look like a different team next season with no Des Bryant and no Jason Witten. Stephen Jones was asked if Dallas is a team in transition and said, quote, I don't look at it as a transition as I do just resetting. He added that young players like Dak and Zeke will now be the core of the team. We're joined now by former Cowboys defensive coordinator, Rob Ryan. Welcome, Rob. Good yeah, morning. Good, good to go. be here. How good will the Cowboys be next season? I think they'll be excellent. I think, wow. Um, I excellent. Think, I like uh, that word. <laughs> I think, you know, I understand what Steven's saying. You know, they're resetting. You know, when you use the word transition, obviously that's a do-over. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, they have so much talent. I mean, they're young running back, the quarterback, that offensive line. I mean, there's still a ton of positives there. And, but the biggest positive, I think, is going to be on defense. I think they've added two really good coaches over there. And, look, their defense has struggled. I mean, that uh, Tampa scheme hasn't really stopped anybody, you know, since the, you know, year 2000. So, uh, <laughs> that's, that's I a, like bringing in the cover three. You just said a mouthful. Three. Well, I like yeah. bringing in the cover three guy, yeah. you know, Chris Richard. He's a yeah. fantastic he coach. Is. the ben Seattle Bloom, guy. Right, yeah. Ben Bloom's a great linebacker coach. Yeah. So, uh, uh, trained by yours truly. So, uh -huh. he'll be fantastic. Uh -huh. So. Uh -huh. Uh, I, I just am really excited about that team. Now, that division is as tough as they get. I mean, you bring Alex Smith over to Washington, he's going to be an upgrade. I think he's a great quarterback. Uh, you know, you already got the world champions there. The world Eagles, champs. You know, and then the Giants, uh, you know, they, they've added some great talent. You get Odell if he's healthy again. Yep. Get, get finally some protection for Eli. Yep. Nate which Soto's is big. Yeah, mm -hmm. big, and they've, they've added some good uh, other, other linemen around them. And if they can just play any kind of defense, I mean, you know, that team's going to be competitive. Which they should be able to play, actually. Yeah. That I mean, was you their know, forte. Two years ago, they played really good yeah. defense, and last year they ran out. Landon Collins is a star, yeah. you know, for them. So uh, that's going to be a great division. But I, I can see Dallas right in the thick of it. Huh. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Sharp. Uh, I, I think well, Tampa 2 normally works really well if it's littered with Hall of Famers. You got some yeah. technique. <laughs> and Warren Sapp, you got yeah. Derek Brooks. Right. You got John Lynch down the middle, and you yeah. got a guy that's like 150. 20 sacks and Simeon Wright. And, Tampa 2 will work. And Rondé. Rondé, yeah. yeah that'll work. So yeah, it'll work really good. good. Group, yeah. See, reset, transition. Mm -hmm. Joe, you do a hard reset on your phone, what'd they do? <laughs> they make you cut it off, start all over again from scratch, Joe. That's what reset means. Mm. So all he just said was like, look, fans, we're going to be so slow this year. Yeah, but everything <laughs> on the phone is the same. I'm just a wall. A reboot. Okay, everything the same. That's still the Cowboys. They still got Zach and D Zeke. Mm. But you said you want. Dak to take that next step. Mm -hmm. Well, you better get skip. Okay, you got rid of Dez. Think that's a good thing. You get uh, 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 Witten retired. Mm -hmm. Who are you placing with? Really? I already told uh, you. Hearns. You, you Hearns. So Hearns is going to be an upgrade over Dez. Rico, he played well in the preseason. Rico gathers. Rico gathers from Baylor. Yep. I've seen a lot. Rob, you've seen a lot of guys play really well in the preseason. Mm -hmm. Boy, when they come to that real, real, real deal mm -hmm. where the games really, really matter, yep. all of a sudden the preseason ain't the regular season mm. and they don't look the same, Skip. Mm. So I don't really see. I don't really see. Yeah, okay, yeah, you got those guys. Mm. You better win right now, Skip, because mm. in two years those contracts going to be up. Then what? Mm -hmm. How do you pay a quarterback $130 million with $110 guarantee, a running back $70 million mm. with $50 million guarantee? How do you build from that? Mm. You sound nervous to me. I'm, I'm good. Like. I'm good because yeah. the Eagles, because old, yeah. old walk it to him, going to come yeah. back healthy. Is he? Oh, yeah. yeah. Old lick him, old Eli. And you realize Nick Foles is really healthy. He's mentally and physically We're talking healthy. about the Cowboys. I know. We're not we talking are. about yeah. They got a quandary going on there. <laughs> so, 
I'm with Coach on this because I actually right. like this team better with low expectations because I think going into the year, most people pick them like 8-8-ish, eight and eight something. They'll, they'll be just out of the mix, which is the perfect place for this team because, to Coach's point, you have a top 10 quarterback in Dak Prescott whose QBR was third in the league as a rookie, only fourth last year in a quote-unquote bad year. The running back can be, if he's eligible and healthy, the best running back in football. The most explosive, the most lethal, the most game-changing is that kid. If he's right, mentally, physically, He'll be right. eligible. Well, I hope so, because he's still got issues he's working through. The offensive line underachieved last year, but you got five Pro Bowls here, four here, and four here. So you got three who were, in, were ranked by the NFL players last year in the top 25 players in the league. And they went out and got New England's right tackle. They got Tom Brady's right tackle, Cameron Fleming. I'm not saying he's a Pro Bowl player, but he's pretty good. He started the Super Bowl for the New England Patriots, and it allows them to push Lyle Collins back to left guard where he belongs. He was shaky at right tackle. It was unnatural for him. So all of a sudden, I think it all will fall back together, obviously, Tyron Smith's health is a huge issue because he's got back problems, and, and mm -hmm. yet he's only 20, what, 27? Yeah, so, 27, 28. Yeah, yeah, yeah he came okay. out 2011. So, so it's not like he's old. It's no. not like he's at the end of the line. He should be just entering his prime. But that right? back injury will make you okay. old before well, your well, time. Okay, it could. But I still say that Baylor kid's going to be an X factor, and I still say as much as I love Jason Witten and I love Des Bryant, this is where you and I part ways, I still say there's some addition by subtraction where you just start fresh and you let the quarterback read and react instead of saying, well, you have to throw it to 88 and you have to throw it to 82 because he got a little too dependent on Des for sure. And then there are so many check downs to 82 and 82 at this stage of his career will catch it for six yards. And then that's probably going to be about the end of it. Right. Yep. So he can't gash you by turning and running for another six or eight yards or 20 yards. So to me, you, you add all kinds of Alan Hearns's and Deontay Thompson's and Michael Gallup that you took in the third round, and you just hope that Cole Beasley in this mix will come back to life because they'll be spreading the ball to a lot of people, which they have not been, been able to do for the last two years. You know, the, 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 the saying goes, Skip, it's not aiming having high expectations and failing, it's having low expectations and succeeding. <laughs> See, he got low expectations for the Cowboys. So you're going to say, you know, eight and eight, you know, everybody got them. That's, that's pretty low, Skip. And so if they hit that, you're like, well, this was a team, you know, they were in transit. Oh, they were resetting. They lost Jason <laughs> Witten. They lost Gaz <laughs> Bryant, blah, blah, blah. No, Skip, uh-uh, uh-uh. Shouldn't you have higher standards for America's team, the most valuable team mm -hmm. in all of pro sports? Shouldn't you expect more from them? Why do we expect the Patriots to be 11-5 and mm -hmm. five and 12-4 and four and 13-3, and three, but we don't have that for the best team in football? I mean, the, the America's team. What, what's mm -hmm. going on, Skip? Well, I like it because you think they're going to be even worse than 8-8. Eight and eight. That's You've been making the case. I said some stir-fry. Okay. What does that mean? Stir-fried like poop. Like 4 and 12? 7 and 9. You said <laughs> stir-fried poop. That's what you yeah. called them, right? Yep. That okay, so be. what? What? Wow. Four and seven five? and nine. Seven and nine. Seven and nine. That sounds oh, poop so. can't go seven and yeah, nine. Yeah, they can. can it? That's what y'all going? Huh? That's okay. What, All right. You want some sprite on it right now? Right now, today. All right, I'll take that. I don't do sprite. I do. Dot Ocho now. de Mayo. Okay. What does that mean? The eighth of May. Okay. Right. <laughs> Well, I just to say the now, <laughs> now I get to push Coach's favorite button because what? Good. that linebacker, is, he's still there. And that guy's name is Sean Lee. Yeah. And last year when he was healthy, they went 8-2 and two in the games he played in. 8-2 and two in the games right. he didn't play in. They went 1-5 and because they beat Kirk Cousins. And they drafted Kirk a replacement. Cousins. They were drafted a replacement, too. No. no they, 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 they drafted they did. a kid that hopefully, you know, can give him some extra linebacker play because, look, the truth of the matter is Sean does, you know, get banged up. If he stays healthy, you know, he is a difference maker, obviously. But, but at least this kid can come in. He's an athletic guy. He can run around, make plays, and, and they need him. I mean, and especially if they're going to play more of this cover three, yep. they need an athletic kid like him. And I think it's a great choice. Uh, but the big thing, you know, with Sean is he makes everybody better because, you know, he knows exactly what the offense is going to do. He slows the game down for him. So if you're running any style of, of defense, it helps you. And, uh, you know, but to me, they still have some excellent players. I love the pass rushers they still have. Lawrence and Irving 
When those two are healthy, there's another thing. If Irving can stay healthy, get away from the concussions, they can have a real push. And if the coverage is tighter, because mm -hmm. believe me, it was about as loose as I've seen, you know, uh, until well, the end of the year uh, when they went against Foles. Uh, I, to me, I think this is, uh, this, this is a great starting point. Like you say, teams are expect yeah, this is low expectations for Dallas. I don't get it. I don't see how they're I losing. They're losing a, a great receiver, obviously, but he didn't always fit in with with what Prescott and Linehan wanted to do. I think uh, Scott does a great job of, of using his personnel. He's going to get his back back. Who, who every week am I playing? Am I not? Yep. How could he prepare that way? I don't know. And he still missed six games, and they still won some games. So. Look, this team's going to be rolling, and, and I love the point you made of putting Collins in there at guard again yep. where he just mauls people. I mean, that, that's outstanding. Yep. And, and they drafted a backup tackle in case, you know, that debacle in Atlanta doesn't happen again. That's correct. You know, so I like where they're heading. Yep. So I, do I. You know, and, and it'll be interesting. Do me. Case of do. I'll take you on seven and nine. Seven Better than seven, seven and nine. Seven and nine. Seven and nine. Yeah, seven they, and nine. They went nine and, and seven I, last year in a disaster year. And if I and never I had went, their back. And, and if they go seven, eight, and one, I get the tie, I get the tie too. They okay, gonna I'll have seven wins. <laughs> you can have that. And, and you know what, Skip? Yeah. I, I know why you set low expectations. Mm -hmm. Because that's all you've had since 1995. Oh, with I, low expectations. I think you just walked right into the low expectations trap. No, I already know what they're gonna be. I already know what they're gonna be. Yeah, yeah the yeah. Cowboys. Okay. Yeah. Now, that, uh, I got now, you. The stadium's gonna be filled. Jerry's huh? gonna have a lot of revenue. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I mean, Jerry, the, 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 the that money counter gonna be going off, and all Always the L's. Does. L. Always does. L. Really? L. Okay. L. Okay. That's the only team I know that's not affected by L. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. Join us again at 9.30 a.m. Eastern on Monday for another week of Undisputed. We'll see you then. Fox Sports. One of one. one.